And new guidelines for the treatment and support of people with ADHD, I'll remind you, it stands for Attention, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, reveal more support is needed for families and victims involved. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE, as it's bizarrely known, has set out a quality standard for the care of children and adults diagnosed with ADHD. It's the most common behavioural condition in the UK. Symptoms include short attention span and hyperactivity. But there's also a school of thought that in some instances people diagnosed with ADHD simply don't have it. Dave Traxon is an educational psychologist, or an ed psych, as they're known in shorthand in the profession. He's written extensively on this issue, joins me now. Morning, Mr. Traxon. Hello there. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Of every 100 people, possibly children, who are diagnosed with ADHD, what do you think are the legitimate, perhaps, people who have it? Well, when uh, when we talk to uh, psychologists nationally, and that's uh, educational and clinical psychologists, we think it's about 20 to 30 percent of the ones that uh, are given the label, are given the diagnosis, um, might well have legitimate um, problems of that sort of nature. What sort of tests or how do you determine that a, a client or a child has ADHD? What do you do? Well, that's the biggest worry of all, actually, Nick, is that it's all done by checklists. And often it's checklists filled in by the parent. Um, when we survey schools, uh, in about 47% of cases, the school hasn't even been contacted by the doctor. So um, in order for it to be real ADHD, it has to occur in every setting. It has to occur in the home. It has to occur at school. It has to occur even if they're watching their favorite TV program. Um, the evidence of the ADHD would still be present. So that's why we think there's this um, gross uh, overdiagnosis. What, what, what is in it for the parents? What is in it possibly for the schools or others to try and say that a child might have ADHD? Well, for the schools, it might be as simple as um, wanting a bit more um, sort of submissive children uh, or, you know, cooperative children would be a better way of putting it probably. But um, sadly for the parents, um, in, in quite a few cases, there can be um, some financial gain from disabled living allowance which um, on the higher level for behaviour problems can be £600 a month. What happens when a child has ADHD? What, the, presumably at its, at its most acute, there, is, there are drugs that are available. Yeah. I mean, the um, NICE guidelines, which you mentioned earlier, um, recommend that in all cases, psychological intervention should be um, tried first. And in countries like France and Denmark, that is very common that they try a... Um, cognitive behaviour therapy or um, psychological counselling before they get onto uh, drugs. And that is, you know, we give credit to NICE for making it clear that that should be the case. Uh, medication should only be given in very um, extreme cases, and there's common agreement on that. There, You know, uh, psychologists, doctors, psychiatrists. But what we feel is that that is being breached, that it isn't just being given to children at the severe end. Mr. Jackson, hold on the line if you would. Listening to that is Therese Glynn, who has a son with ADHD and is a project manager at ADHD and Autism Support in Harrow. What is the situation with your son, Ms. Glynn? Um, well, my son's 21 now. Um, he was diagnosed when he was six. Um, he was a very classic case of, of ADHD and still is today. Um, it was um, a very traumatic time for all of us as a family. Um, how, how did it show itself? How, how did you know your six-year-old boy had ADHD? I didn't know until he was actually diagnosed, but I knew right. something was wrong. Yes. Um, he was very, very impulsive to the point where he was a danger to himself. Right. You know, he would climb a tree to a point where no one could get him. He would run out into the road. He would escape out of a harness if we were out in public when he was small. Um He'd lie in the middle of a roundabout. You know, you just had to have your hand on him the whole time. And often two of us had to hold him. Um, he was very, very inattentive. He couldn't sit and, uh, you know, pay attention to anything at all for longer than a couple of seconds. Um, you know, he, he had a terrible time at nursery and playgroup and school were pulling their hair out with him. They couldn't get him to sit still at all. So, you know, it was it was really impacting on his life and it was clearly 
there was something going on. Um, so to those who say he was just a rather willful and naughty boy, how would you respond? Well, I, I now know he wasn't at the time. I probably would have said, well, yes, perhaps he is. Um, you know, and, and as a parent, you often get blamed. Um, and I was blamed, you know, it's, it's the way you're bringing him up. And yet I've got an older daughter who was perfectly behaved and had boundaries. Um, you know, there were no issues there at all. So how can I bring one child up so well and one child not? So, you know, again, it's something that we are very firm about where, you know, where we work, we're very clear that actually it's not usually the parents' fault. They're dealing with something that is very, very complicated. They say, as you, you'll be aware, this research says that there needs to be more help and more treatment and more support. Yeah. How should that materialise itself, Mrs. Flynn? Well, you know, it's really sketchy. I mean, for children and adolescents, it's, it's not bad. Um, I don't agree with the oversubscribed. I think, if anything, it's undersubscribed. Oh, really? Uh, under, Underreported. Absolutely. I mean, if you, t I mean, our borough in Harrow, um, you know, we have a, a few years ago we did some statistics and we have roughly seven hundred and fifty thousand youth. Um, young children and adolescents. And out of that, if you take the percentage that it should be statistically, it's about 5% of, of that population. Well, let's just put that, just put that too. Don't, don't go. Uh, Dave Traxon, the Ed site. Uh, there we are. This uh, lady suggesting perhaps it's underreported. How would you respond? Well, well, some people believe that. And I mean, it does sound as though her son, you know, is one of the very genuine cases. And I, and I have come across those cases and I have, I have contacted psychiatrists and, uh, those children have benefited from medication. But what we're concerned about is that um, things like restlessness and fidgetiness are being um, medicalized and, and what we, what, um, pathologized. And we think that's just um, medicalizing normality, that these are nor restlessness is normal. Theresa Lynn? Yeah, I mean, I would be concerned. I mean, when you spoke, you know, when the gentleman spoke about, you know, the diagnosis of just um, a checklist by parents, I mean, I would be appalled if that was the way a diagnosis was made. And I know where we are, uh, that isn't the case at all because observations are done in school. Um, there is a Connors questionnaire which goes home with the parents. Um, anyone related with the child also fills one in. Um, the psychiatrist will go in and observe in a classroom setting. Okay. Um, you know, there will be a, a whole team of um, paediatricians or psychiatrists doing an observation in a clinic. I will leave it there, Therese Glynn. Thank you. You have a son with the condition. You're project manager at ADHD and autism support in Harrow. My thanks also to Dave Traxon, who's an educational psychologist. Check out some of his works on this subject. Part of the government recommendation is to refer to parents or carers of children with ADHD to those who've just been diagnosed for a parent training program. If you've got a son or a daughter who has a condition, what would you put in that program? So when does ADHD, when is it actually just not willfulness, naughtiness, when does it become ADHD? NICE has set out a quality standard for the care of children and indeed adults diagnosed with it. It's the most common behavioural condition in the country. Here's some of the new guidance referring those suspected of having it to a specialist for assessment and referring parents or carers of children to a parent training program that would be informed by those parents or carers, they don't mention teachers actually, arranging an annual specialist review for those on drugs and offering a psychological group treatment to children and young people with moderate ADHD. So if you have a child or possibly a grandchild or you know of a child with ADHD, what would you say to this program? What are the tips that you would give? How do you help? If you're suddenly told today or you were told yesterday or told tomorrow your daughter, your son has ADHD, what lies ahead of you and how do you control it. Judy's in Brentwood. Judy, what would you tell them? Good morning. Well, when I used to help in a school, in one of the classes, there were four children who were supposed to have ADHD. Mm. And they all had a one-to-one -one with them. So those children were in and out of the classroom and, and these people would chase them backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And the head would come and kneel down and say, now what, what made you want to do that? Right. And and the whole thing was so ridiculous. And I What sorry, it, why is that ridiculous? Well, because there was no there was no punishment, there was no they they just didn't they come not to work and then also there's a little shop down the corner and on the way in you'd see these children having these sweet fizz, fizzy drinks because one of the you know, they they just don't have proper breakfast and things. So what are they going to be? Hired kites on uh, on on all this sugar? So and, and diet you, comes into it. Yes, of course, diet comes. But do you, you, what you think in some instances, we might have children who have said they said that they have ADHD, but in fact, all that's happening is they're having fizzy orange for breakfast. 
well, not just says the orange, but just no determination from anybody around them to help them to work. What? It's just, it's just failing the children all over the place. When they talk about this program, coming back to my initial question, what is it then that you would say? What What does a parent or a carer or grandparent who's suddenly told that their daughter, their son, granddaughter has it, what What do they need to be told? Well, they just need to be told, look, we, we're going to put in place some some sort of consequences for your child not getting on. But I mean, what can they do in schools these days? And then the child can see whether it can actually sit still for 10 minutes. They might find that if it's got a consequence, like... Nor, you know, the children have a consequence, yeah. don't they, at home? If they don't do it, if they're told, there's a consequence. But what consequences can I you put no in? I have no idea. In, no, I don't in know school. What they can no, do. no, Judy, shh. In school, what consequences do you This think is what I'm saying. I don't know what they can do. But you work in one. Well, not now. They asked me to leave because they didn't want any more volunteers. Oh, why not? Well, they had, they had a new head come in and he just decided to get rid of all the volunteers. What did you think about that? Oh, it was very, very upsetting because I had a good relationship with um, a lot of the kids and with, you know, the the, the um, parents and the... But, you know, what, do you we do were all... what do you do with your time now? Oh, I do lots of sport instead. Oh, do you? Oh, as long as you, as long as you miss it? No. You don't? Do you miss the kids? I do. And Let I'm me ask you sorry. this. As someone who's worked in schools, right, yeah. tell me, when, is a ch when do you think a child genuinely has ADHD? Well, I think there are very few. I think you can see it. You can see a child who absolutely just isn't on the same page with you at all. But if you can, you know, if you can. But get what do you mean? Child, what, I mean, their eyes, are, you know. Well, tell... they're just not. They're, they're just gone. You know, they're not I don't gone. Know. I can't describe it. They, hmm. I mean, with one child, for instance, this person was chasing this child in and out, in and out. So I said, I'll they're have a go. Naughty. Cause they're just had naughty. to leave this the whole class. Yeah. So I said to this little boy, I said, okay, we'll kick this ball for five minutes and then we'll go and do some writing, okay? And he said, okay. And we went and sat down after five minutes and we did writing and he was perfectly fine. Mm. It's difficult, isn't it? Uh, Judy, thanks for all your perspective. Alan's in Maidstone. Alan, what do you do for a living? I'm a family coach, Nick. What does that mean? It means I help parents see themselves from a different perspective. Tell me what that means in simple terms then. I help parents realise that when they love themselves, their children behave differently. When they love themselves? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, right, well, let's, have you worked with children or families of children with ADHD? Yes, I have. And do you believe in it? You, you believe there is a condition? I do believe there's a condition, um, but I think, as you've already covered, there's some people that actually don't uh, have, or young people that don't have ADHD. So there's have, mis there's, there is misdiagnosis? I believe so. Okay. What but sort of level? Doctor. What sort of level? I mean, we heard from the educational psychologist that there, in some instances there, there, there could be as much as 40, uh, sorry, 20, 20, I'm so sorry, uh, only 20% of legitimate ADHD, so there could be up to 80% misdiagnosis. Absolutely. You agree with that? Um, I'm not a doctor, but my experience says that there's a lot of different made when parents treat children differently right. as, I, as your last speaker said that when the children feel different about themselves they behave differently and that's really the core of what i help them do so what do you do break it down in simple terms what what is it i help them realize that they're creating their own reality by the way they think about things and they can change that that children are very sensitive to a parent's emotional state and when they uh, realize that some children are taking responsibility for the parent's emotional state. They start to take it re really seriously and start to do some work around themselves. I don't understand. You, you've got a child who runs around the house all day or wants to jump in the middle of the road or, or jump or sleep on the roundabout. What, what do you say to that child then? I don't say anything to the child. I'm helping the parent deal with the child differently. Right. Like what? Well, as I say, when they start to see themselves differently... Then right. the children are Hang on. A, a child just runs up and down the supermarket throwing bottles. No, that isn't the time to be talking about this type well, that's the time they'll call you in. No, they don't. They call me in for different reasons. I work with groups of parents, and all of a sudden they see that within their situation, and they're reporting all different types of experiences, that the core issue... It's about how they feel about themselves. You're telling me that the reason a child is running out in the road... And no, 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 I'm not telling you that. I'm, what I'm telling you is 
when the parent feels differently about themselves, overall the children will behave differently. Why? Re- well, let me give you an example. Recently, there was a child of seven who was diagnosed ADHD who had been a real challenge in school. And because the parent had started feeling more comfortable within themselves, the teacher pulled her aside and said um, that your son has changed completely and there was a group of children he was playing with that started right, getting well, I'll up. tell you what, let, hang on. So let's talk to a parent. Rachel's in Gillingham. Hello, Rachel. I don't know whether to explode with anger or cry at the ignorance I'm hearing today. He's, on, really he's on the don't. line. Why don't you talk to Alan? Okay, Alan, right. Alan, I am one of these so-called inadequate parents. No, um, no, I don't, yeah, I don't have any problem. Can I speak, please? I think you've had your turn. Um, you know, we've had, you know, you've talked about all parents are this, all parents are that. Now, Alan, I have a child, well, it's a child, he's now 21, so I've been right through from diagnosis at six with Asperger's. The sort of ignorance we're hearing today, it's not all about the parents. Of course the parents have a place. But you also have some very, very capable parents. Would you, Alan, say to a parent of a child with a broken leg, oh, well, you're just going to have to adapt to the situation. It's all your fault because you're saying the same thing. ADHD, Asperger's, it is not something that people choose to do and it certainly isn't all down to inadequate parenting. Yes, there are times when a child is labelled as ADHD when it is down to inadequate parenting, but it is certainly not the full story. Um, Alan, do you want to come back on that? If I may. Um, I totally accept what you're saying, but what I'm saying is that all parents are doing the best they can with what they know. They can't do anything about what they don't know. And what I'm saying is that there isn't anything wrong with parents or children what we need to work on is the relationship between the parent and the child. And I certainly wouldn't say all parents are inadequate. I would say all parents are perfectly well, what, what, adequate. What was, Alan, wrong, what was wrong with Rachel's relationship then? I mean, obviously you don't know Rachel. I don't child. know Rachel, well, do what, I? And I'm not a judgment. I'm not making a judgment. Well, you're, with respect, you, you are, are making a judgment. How am I making a judgment? Because you're saying that the problem lies in the relationship between parent and child, which is fairly judgmental. Okay. So, from that perspective, can you accept that you could do something different to change the relationship with your child? Well, let's, well yes, I, fortunately, my children are, are, are regular, whatever one was, they don't have it. But let's ask Rachel. Rachel, your response to that? I think that with any disability, you will actually adapt behaviour to the disability, but that does not mean that there is anything wrong with the child-parent relationship. Any parents... Alan, am I right in thinking you're not a parent, by the way? <laughs> I've got three children. How old are they? One of them is now 21, yeah. uh, 32, and 30. Okay, and do they have any disabilities themselves? No. No, I didn't think so. Right, okay. Right, um, you know, you will always find that with any parent-child relationship, obviously as a parent of three children, you will appreciate this, that any parent-child relationship, unless the parent is incredibly arrogant, you can always do better. There are always times when you have teenage years, terrible twos, whatever, where parents do adapt their behaviour. However, your implication that, oh yes, well, it's the parents. I'm sorry, it's simply not true. It's the relationship, with, with respect, it's the relationship is what uh, exactly. Alan is saying. It's the relationship with the parents. It's not, he's not criticising you. In fact, no, but he's saying the relationship yeah. is inadequate the, or the, is, oh, is no. lacking in something because he's looking for a change. I'm looking for you, Rachel, to say, is there anything you can do to change your relationship? But how will, that stop, how, spend... how will that stop her son, I know he's 21 now, but her son running around or misbehaving in class or not listening? I don't get it. I just don't get it, Alan. Well, if she's carrying on doing the same as she's carrying on doing, she's going to carry on getting what she's carrying on getting. Really? Now. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, she, I do have a name, by the way. Um... I am actually, I've always been a very strict parent. Um, in fact, it's commented by other parents that, you know, I, I do have quite strong limits with my child. 
Now, um, I had a situation, for example, let's, let's give an example. Oh, in response, well, I think I'm going to give a very clear example. Um, and I think it, it's quite common with kids both on the autistic spectrum and kids with ADHD. They actually do have heightened sensitivity to noise, to okay. feel, things like that. Now, when my son was six, yep. his class used to have carpet time. All the kids sit on the carpet and they're talking or whatever's going yeah, on. They with call the it teacher. editorial meetings, yeah? Yep. Yeah, so exactly the same. Yeah. Now, um, my son could they not keep them. still. He would run off and couldn't stay on the carpet. Right. So it was discussed, and I came up with a solution. I said, right, instead of having him sitting on the carpet where he's too close to the other kids, and that's why he's running, because it's too much for him. It's, o it's overload. He sat on a chair on the edge of the carpet. Problem solved. Yep. Now, um, you know, Result. the reason he ran around wasn't because he was inadequately parented, it was because he was okay. in a situation that he couldn't, physic he couldn't physically or mentally deal with. Okay, quick, Rachel, thank you, and I must let you get on with the rest of your day. Quick response, Alan. Um, can I make a couple of points? Please, Briefly, please? if you would, because I must move on. Firstly, my passion is to unleash the potential in children. That's really why I'm doing this work. Coaching is all about accepting that parents have got all the answers they need inside. So I don't actually tell them anything, I just ask them questions. Okay, and the example of the carpet time? Can I just finish what I'm saying? Because well, where yeah, I'm I mean, coming from... We have been from chatting for 20 minutes, yes, go on. Is that more my fault, I, No, it's not. I mean, it's more than I speak to my children, but I, if I have got other folk to speak with, so if, briefly, right. if you would... Um, the other thing was, that I soon discovered, when I worked with children and young yeah. people, that every single one of them said, they're not listened to, they're not valued, they're not respected. Okay. Which is why I started working with the parents. Right. And the parents that come to us come because they need help. Okay. And 50% of them leave after the first session because they realise they're looking at themselves, they don't like what they see, and it's easier not to come back. All right, Alan, I'm going to leave it there for time reasons. I did ask you about the carpet and I'm grateful to you, Alan, and thank you, Rachel, as well. Lots more reaction on that to come. A, is it a son or a daughter you have with ADHD? It's my son. Sorry, Nick, I'm ever so nervous. It's oh, my son who who ha had ADHD as a small boy, yeah. and the um, uh, we I didn't know because he was my first child, so I had no idea. I just assumed all children were like it. He never settled. He'd mm. be running and chasing and climbing trees, doing things he should never be doing at a very small age, at four years, trying to climb trees. And I didn't really, I didn't realise what it was. Right. Um, once he went to school, they kind of picked up on it. But, uh, and it was really how I coped. Um, uh, what I, did I you think make of that gentleman who said it's all down with the pet to the parenting relationship? Um, I think he's got his opinions, but it, it, I don't, I don't see it as, uh, as it's something that a parent should be blamed for or could cope with necessarily. Right. My, when I spoke to my husband, my husband said he was exactly the same. He was a hyperactive child, always running, always out, always playing. Yeah. And in those days, you could let children do that. But obviously, today, it's not so easy. For me personally, what I did was I stopped all the sweet, uh, fizzy drinks and sweets and sugars. Not always just that. Sometimes it's fruit that, you know, make yeah. children hyperactive. Yeah. Um, and for him, I, I couldn't say to him, go in the morning, get him ready, because I had two other children after him. Yeah. Uh, to, to, for him to get ready, I had to say to him, right, now go and put your socks on and come back to mum. And otherwise, if I said to him, go and get dressed, he'd be in his room playing. But hang on, so, aren't all boys like that? Or aren't many, possibly. Say, aren't many boys like that, I should say? Po possibly, possibly. But mm. this is this is the strategies that worked for me. Right. Um, I'd have to give him, I'd, I'd have to get down to his level and say to him, this is what you need to do now. Yes. And then let, and then come back to me and show me that you've done it. Because I had two small, I had two, two small so, children after him. So to, the, the um, idea of this survey or research is that perhaps parents like you would have input into what the training program would be. Lastly, Lauren, what uh, would you say to a, a mum or a dad or grandparent who'd just been told that their child, grandchild had ADHD? I, I would say, um, you, you know your child better than anybody else. Uh, the schools don't understand sometimes how to keep children, uh, how to keep children um, focused on what they need to be doing. Um, but we work with adults. I work with adults now who have ADHD in colleges. We give them small amounts to do and then come back and have some fun and then small amounts to do and there's light at the end of the tunnel my son's now a qualified electrician he has lots of money 
You just need to keep them focused for small times, get them to do what they need to do, and then get them to come back. Now, lastly, what on earth were you nervous about? You've done a fan- <laughs> You've done a fan- <laughs> fantastic. I am nervous. Sorry, Why? Nick, but you did uh, well. <laughs> Have you never done? You've never phoned me before. Uh, I think I phoned you a good few years ago, but well, obviously were... I had more confidence then. Well, I don't but know there's... why you were bringing Oh, thank you. There's so much that can be said on that subject, and I know you haven't got time for it. But Well, I've got time for you, and I've listened to you, and I'm really grateful. We will return to it, but only because everybody needs to know what's happening on the roads. I've got to go. Lauren, good luck to the lad. Well done. Everybody will always need an electrician, so he's in a good job there. Good morning. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the ADHD and sort of autism. Yeah. Um, I've got um, I've got five children, and um, our last young one, obviously, I knew it was a problem right from right from the word go. Like the lady says, you know your own children. They don't settle, unachieving. He got kicked out of a private nursery. He got kicked out of another nursery. And he eventually went to this other nurse and they identified, she says, we're not allowed to say, but I think he's got blah, 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 blah. This. Right. I need, I help you get him assessed. So they got him assessed, got him in their local school and that, and we told them what he's got, blah, 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 blah. Yes, we can cope with it. We can deal with this. We can deal with that. We can do Brilliant. We thought, my wife is getting phone calls every day, 10 minutes into a day, every single day for two years or more. He had to come take him. He'd done this. He'd done that. They just hadn't got a clue how to manage the child and children like there was other children there like that and they just hadn't got a clue how to how to deal with the children. I mean we've had to take a complete learning curve how to deal with children, you know, our, what our have you child learned? like that. Excuse we've learned about. that you can't say no to a child with ADHD or autism. You can't say no. You have to say, Yes, we can do this, but first we are going to do this hang now. On, hang on, hang on. Can I run across the M twenty five, Dad? Um yes you can do, but oh, first bye. Of all, in certain circumstances, I mean, it, in certain it, circumstances, I can run across the M25. No, no, no. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, it's, it's you have to reword the word no, uh, you know, in a constructive way. Okay. I, I, say, again, I cannot. Unfortunately, Dad, the car's broken down, a tire's blown. I'm stuck on the M side of the M25, and I'm bored. Can I run to the other side to get an ice cream? I don't think that would be a good idea, Nick. Because if you did that, then we wouldn't have time to go and get your stuff over here. Would be. Oh, That's I what see. You've got to say. So you have so to have I've an incentive. No. You have yeah. to have an incentive to sell it to them. to yeah. Do the it's, normal. It's, it's, it's like it's, it's, it's like it, yes, it is, and it's it's like a trade off. Like we, we've learned. I mean, but ran right our way. There's just actually no help at all. And our little, our youngest is nine. And he's only gone to school for the first time this year. He's nine years old. He's missed so much education because oh. he's been kicked out of school here, kicked out of school there. They can't deal with it. And in certain areas, you get a very, very, very good Senko system. And in certain areas. Um, you get a very, very bad thing. Sorry, Sen- Senko, you've got me there. What's Which is special, special education needs coordinator. Thank you. Supposed yeah. to know everything about the child, you know, oh. children's needs, whatever. You get good ones ben, and you get very, very bad ones. Ben, you, and, you sound a lovely bloke and a very caring dad. As your lad gets older, what is he going to be able to hold down a job? Because not necessarily every employer is going to be like this. Yes, because he's going to school He's going to school now that suits his needs now. It's oh, a fantastic school. Because what happens in mainstream schools, they're trying to fit a square peg and around the hole, and right. it just doesn't fit. You have, you have, they, they do learn, and they're very, very clever like that. You just, like they said, you have to grab their attention. They've got a very, very short attention span. You have to revisit it all the time, and he can't, he's nine, he can't feed himself, you know, in the morning. We have to spoon feed him like a baby, because right. they take so long, it would take, it would take four hours to get rid of a school otherwise. Did you, you hear the very... fellow say that a lot of it can be down to the relationship between parent and child? Well, it's, it's very effective because I've seen some very, very naughty children and um, very, very badly behaved children. And you look at the parents, and unfortunately, it stems from the top, you know, and certain behaviour things. Where if you you had bad parents and don't give a, uh, you know, you'll have, uh, you'll 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 portray the same thing in your children. So there is a certain element of truth in that. But we're not we're not um, by any means um, sort of uh, we're we're quite well off, you know, mm. and so it's. You know, it's not a, it's not it's not like a not like a financial sort of thing. It, it's it's just unfortunately it's in the genes uh, that someone carries the genes. It's in your family. It, it's a gene carried on. You know, it's uh, in in the brain. They can't children like that can't um, understand other people's emotions. Like, Lastly, just respond to this email, Ben, if you would. That's come in while we've been chatting, Linda and Crawley. Regarding ADHD, look, just give them a label. The drug companies will provide a chemical to intervene. It's so bad because then there are side effects. No, there are. He's on medication. His medication, what it does for him, what it does for him, it, it, it helps him cope with his day. Without the medication, he cannot cope with the day. 
they, they can't cope with fast moving things towards them, they can't cope with dogs, they can't cope with any situation. So the medication, it takes the edge off for him. It helps him manage his day better. Ben, thank you. Good luck with the lad. Thanks for all your input. Sophie's in Romford. You have a son or daughter with ADHD. Sophie, can you hear me? Last chance, my dear. Oh, oh. my name's not Sophie. I'm so sorry. I was told no, it was... No, it's okay. What are you? What are you? Uh, Who are Diane. You? Diane. Diane. Wow. Yes. How, we're not even close. Do you live in Romford? Yeah, I live uh, in the Romford area, yeah. Do you know anyone called... So no. On you go, Diane, <laughs> with the point you want to make. Your child has ADHD. Yeah, and he's also autistic. And um, I, was, I was just listening to Alan, and I was just totally gobsmacked by what he was saying about the, the uh, relationship with parents and their children with ADHD. Yeah. Because I think I have a really good relationship with my son. And when he was finally diagnosed with ADHD, which took quite a while, um, if, um, after his autism diagnosis, um, it, it, it changed everything, especially when they finally figured out what medication to start putting him on because he wasn't sleeping. Right. And I don't think that it has to do with the parents' relationship. It just, I mean, it, you have a lot to cope with and a lot to deal with and, and the unpredictability of that child. Right. Because they, they don't, they don't see things the same way that we do. Right. And so I think that he should. What, what, is, what, what is the biggest challenge, Diane? For me, it's him going to sleep um, and for me communicating with him and for him to listen to what I'm saying or to be calm enough to mm. do things that you need him to do, like everyday normal things like getting washed and dressed and, right. and concentrating on that particular task at that time because he can't focus on that task for more than seconds or sometimes even well, the most minutes. Diane, thank you. I know you had more to say. I've literally got less than a minute. And thank you very much. I'm sorry I called you the wrong name. Diane.